Hello, Facebook friends, fans, and followers. My name is Christine Rojas. I am so excited to uh, ask you to join us in our Facebook Live event happening right now. So if you're on Facebook, stop scrolling, and you'll want to go ahead and see this amazing interview with our College of Nursing and Health Sciences Dean, Dr. Maravic Todregosa. Dr. Todregosa, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for inviting me. Of course, of course. Folks, we're going to go ahead and get started with a couple of questions. If there's something specific, especially if you're a nursing or health science major, and you want to go ahead and leave it in the comment section, feel free to do so throughout our interview. Or if you'd also like to send us a direct message, you can do that as well. So, Dr. Todregosa, uh, first of all, what can students look forward to this fall from the College of Nursing and Health Sciences that might be new or different? So this fall, we are launching two graduate degrees in nursing. Mm -hmm. So one is the RN to a master's in nursing administration, mm -hmm. and the second one is the Psych Mental Health Nurse Practitioner Program, mm -hmm. which is a post-master certificate program. So the first one is the RN to a master's in nursing administration. Mm -hmm. This is for nurses who already have an um, associate degree in nursing, but wants to accelerate to a master's degree without having to go through a baccalaureate. So that is the audience for that degree. So it's an RN to a master's in nursing administration. So, um, and the other one is a psych mental health nurse practitioner program, mm -hmm. which is a post-master certificate program. And we know that there's a shortage of mental health providers. So this is right. really good for uh, FNPs who are already certified, who already have a master's degree in nursing, but wants to retool themselves and develop a new skill set in mental health. And so this will be an, um, an appropriate program for them mm -hmm. is a one-year degree. And so after that, they can sit for boards and get a certification for uh, mental health as a nurse practitioner in psychiatric mental health. Wonderful. And just to reiterate, Dr. Torregosa, mm -hmm. so the first uh, degree you mentioned, that is for individuals who have completed their associates degree, right. correct? Right. Yes. And so a lot of times, uh, associate degree nurses go through a baccalaureate degree and then a master's degree. Right. In this case, they just have to go through a master's and graduate with a master's and not a baccalaureate. Right. And we do have, path. yeah, it's accelerated path. Um, although if in the middle of matriculation or mm -hmm. enrollment or during the degree plan or during enrollment that they decide to have a baccalaureate instead of a master's, then they can just take three additional courses and then they can graduate with a baccalaureate degree because we know life happens during graduate school. Right. So, and then maybe later on they can uh, pursue a master's, but if they want to finish with a baccalaureate, we also have a path for them. Wonderful. Well, it sounds like there's uh, many exciting pathways for individuals who want to go into a, a, a career as a nurse, correct? Yes. So we are developing options for, for nurses because we know that uh, in the field of nursing, uh, the, you know, the industry is looking for higher educated nurses with higher level of degrees, but nurses are very busy, so they have options. Right. Wonderful. Now, um, are there uh, any resources that are available specifically to College of Nursing students that might be different from other colleges, would you say? Mm -hmm. So last year, we were fortunate enough that we uh, won a grant. There was a grant awarded to us, plus administration supported us, and we developed a state-of-the-art sim uh, simulation laboratory. It's in the Canseco Hall. Uh, it costs us about $1.3 with equipment and all the... Uh, uh, what do you call it, the renovations. And so that is where our students train for their clinicals. They do simulation and so that it helps them develop critical thinking and clinical competence so that they're ready for the workforce. Um, also, the college is fortunate that we have endowment funds and scholarship monies in which the students can apply. Um, we have a scholarship committee who decides on that. And, you know, with those monies, they don't have to pay back and perhaps help offset the cost of college. Wonderful, wonderful. And I know that that simulation room, there is also a video, folks, on YouTube. We'll go ahead and leave it in the comments. That way you can go ahead and see a firsthand look at that uh, simulation room and what uh, these resources are for our nursing students as well. So we'll leave that in the comments below. And if you're seeing this on our website, there'll be a link below for you to see. 
Uh, I was just going to add, you know, that video that they shot uh, last summer. Those are actually our current students. Oh, wonderful. So there are the faces of the current students right now. Oh, wonderful. So you can, if you're a current student right now, you might be watching, you might want to go ahead and check yourself out in that video as well. Uh, Dr. Todregosa, are there any uh, research opportunities for uh, nursing or health sciences students that might want to get that, that firsthand uh, working experience alongside a faculty member, what you say? Yes, we do have faculty who's conducting research in nursing. I'm one of those. Um, there are also faculty conducting research in public health and in kinesiology. And for undergraduate students who will engage themselves in undergraduate research with faculty, this really prepares them to, uh, this prepares them for higher ed or graduate degrees in the future. So I encourage the students to really go out from their comfort zone and uh, explore the campus and talk to the faculty and engage themselves in research, not the whole research, but maybe a piece of research so that you can understand, you know, the whole mechanism and hold the ga a whole gamut of how it is to be engaged in research and how it is done. So then what do you say, Dr. Torregosa, if there's a student who might want to go into uh, graduate studies, who might be an undergrad and wants to pursue uh, a, a faculty, uh, helping a faculty member out in their research, would you say that's a good step for them then? Of course, yes, it does be a great step because, you know, there's a mentoring happening there or will happen, and so that will really kind of like open doors for the student, maybe perhaps present in a campus conference or regional right. conference. So that helps them develop confidence because basically that's what you're going to do in graduate school. Right. So they have, and it also enhances their learning experience here at TAMIU. Would you also say it's a good addition for their resumes as well? Yes, absolutely. Uh, I have had graduate, I mean, an undergraduate student, and she pursued for uh, graduate school. And one of the things that they actually ask her is her experience about undergraduate research. Did she publish with the faculty or wrote abstracts and things like that? And that actually is an additive value for them to consider you for right. graduate school. So I highly encourage that. To, for our students to really pursue while they are here at TAMIU. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, Dr. Todorokos. And last question, folks, last question. Um, can you give us a brief look at any upcoming college activities happening this fall? Okay, so actually uh, this September we are scheduling a mock trial. This is sponsored by the College of Nursing and Health Sciences under the TAMU SANE program or grant. So in this mock trial, um, we have a real um, judge and a real attorneys who, and then also nurses, real nurses who will be uh, acting as expert witness in the litigation. Mm -hmm. One of the things as a healthcare provider is that, you know, you can be sued later on. And mm -hmm. so um, in your lifetime, you may be asked for to do like a deposition or whatever. Mm -hmm. So this will help you know, the nursing students and our future workforce and how to conduct themselves mm -hmm. to be an expert witness in court. And so we are scheduling this in, in, in September. And so the audience here will be students in nursing, students in health sciences, and perhaps also criminal justice. They can right. glean a lot of information and how court proceedings and litigation and how to be an expert witness in a case. Wonderful. And we'll leave that in the comment section as well, that information on getting signed up for that upcoming mock trial event. Dr. Todorigosa, thank you so thank much you. for joining us today, folks. And if you want to go ahead and follow T-X-M-A-M-I-U-C-N-H-S, let me go ahead and say that one more time, T-X-A-M-I-U-C-N-H-S, that's the College of Nursing and Health Sciences. You're going to go ahead and want to follow them on Facebook and on Instagram, folks. And again, my name is Christine Rojas. Make sure to follow us on social media, TXAMIU, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, Spotify. Check out our playlist and YouTube, folks. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Thank Colorosa. you. Thank you for having me of here. Of course. Thank wonderful. You. Thank you so much. Make sure to get registered for the fall semester. Classes start August 22nd, folks, and late registration continues until Friday, August 26th. Thank you so much, and Dustin.